Hey folks, welcome, 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 welcome out there. It is a great, what, Wednesday afternoon? We, do any of y'all lose track of time like I do like the days? It seems like we're kind of in that mode. I'm Ernie Roberts. I am your host for MathLine. This is a live show today, by the way, so we do invite you to call in. 844-686-2378, that is the number. We have operator waiting to get you hooked into me. We'll chat, we'll talk. We will answer your math questions. We'll work problems together, all sorts of good things. And hopefully on down the road, we're gonna hear from Mickey this uh, afternoon, later in the show, and talk a little bit about what Corona's doing today. And in addition to that, you know what the deal is? We got the problem of the day waiting for you. So let's take a look at our problem of the day. This one got some response on Facebook. Changing 875 thousandths, folks, that's thousandths place, into a fraction and we're going to reduce it to lowest terms. Once again, change 875 thousandths with a th into a fraction reduced to lowest terms. And by the way, everyone who did attempt it on Facebook, congratulations, you got it correct as far as I know. And we may have some others who have tried to it within this later in this afternoon that I didn't get to check in with. But let's take a look at this thing. And the key, key thing is understanding what does this mean? And I said it very clearly, I hope, I'll say it clearly again, 875 thousandths with a thaw on the end. So what we're saying is 875 out of 1,000. That is our fraction form. Now, if I just said change to a fraction, you say, ah, that student gets that correct, all right? But it says, let's go to reducing to the lowest terms. That is something else we need to work with. So my thought is, Looking at the problem here, some of you say, well, Ernie, I know my reducing pretty big time, but let's just say we don't, all right? <laughs> some of us some of us aren't quite that good at it. So let's take our 875. I'm going to write it down here where I've got a little bit of room to play with this. We're going to look at numbers that will be divisible into 875 and 1,000. We have a 5 and a 0 on the end, which tells me that we can do a five through there. So let's go for five here and work at that point. So we divide five, 875 by five, and some of you are going like, whoa, what is that going to give us? Well, we'll find out here in just a second. But that down underneath there is going to give us 200. Now, some of you are thinking, how far down can we go on this thing? Well, let's check it out. Let's see what 875 and divide it by five. Let's go with it on our calculator just a second, guys. If I can get that to pop in. This is where most of us are probably thinking about it. And it will go evenly, it has to. 175 is where I thought we might be going. 175. And all of a sudden, things look a lot easier. So we got our 175. Let's go back to our page here. And there we go. We have a, a better, but it's still got fives and zeros. So we're going to go another round here. We're going to divide by five one more time here. And that will take me down a lot lower, <laughs> much, much lower here. We know this side is going to go down to what, 40? And how about this one up here? I'm going to go for 35. If we divide, if we divide 175 by the number 5, we're going to get 35 working out of that. Now, where does it go from here? Oh, you say we've got to go one more notch, don't we? Let's take another five, because once again, the five and the zero are still looking at us. And we have seven and eight coming from there. So it looks like seven eighths was the number we were looking for on Facebook, the magic fraction. And again, our five, our four finalists there, David, Denise, Mark, Margie, all of you had a good answer of seven eighths on it. And I think some others may have tried to attempt that a little bit after that. But um, there you go. We have a good start there. Let's go back to our problem of the day one more time here, guys. just want to show one more thing. Some of you may have gotten the hankering, as we say, when we started off there. Some of you may have said, you know what? I think 25 would work. Or I think 125 might have worked. Most of you probably weren't just jumping on the 125 bandwagon, but 25 could work pretty well. And we can think of that as being, well, basically, how about it, like quarters, all right? So we could have done 25 through here, and that would give us 40, and this would give us the 35, and then we would come right back down to 7 eighths. So both of those are ways that we could work through this, that we could take care of business, and 
again, reduce to the lowest terms. No matter how you get started, you get there to that 7 eighths. So there's your problem of the day. And welcome to MathLine. I understand we have a caller waiting for me on the line. Welcome to our show. And who am I talking with? It's Ryan. Well, Ryan, it's you. How are you doing, sir? Uh, pretty good. Just uh, sitting at home. I actually went up to my pop house today and rode my scooter, which surprisingly I can still fit on it. And that <laughs> made me very sweaty. Oh, okay. Well, sweaty guy you are today. <laughs> well, we got it going there. Well, I'm glad you got out and did a little bit. That's good that you can still sit, as you say, you can still sit on it. You know what to do with it, and it still rides. Obviously, you had a good time with it there. So, um, you got any little math moments for me? Is I know you're say you're still doing schoolwork, aren't you? You've said I think. Yeah, I am. And today, I actually uh, attended a Zoom meeting, but no one really joined. It was just myself and my theater teacher. Okay. Well, uh, that okay. <laughs> Kind of one-on-one -on -one then. Good way to go there. So well, yeah, let's see. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, he actually invited me to come and be with his um, fourth period tomorrow on a Zoom meeting because there's kind of more people okay. on that well, It does make it a lot more it. fun to have yeah. more people. Yeah, for me. And, and for, uh, for everybody. I think it makes it a lot easier if you've got a lot of folks that are meeting. Well, yeah, but... There's like three different periods, and I, oh, I'm actually okay. originally like in the second period, but he invited me to be in the fourth period tomorrow for this. All right. Well, you're in Johnson City, yeah. right? Are you in, in the public? You're in public school up there, aren't you? Yeah, and I, I actually told him about you all today. I said, you know, I have a friend who knows uh, a lot of people from uh, Science Hill. Oh. Um, and Scholars Bowl and things okay. like that. So I, I kind of... I told him about you all and said that I'd call in, try to call in every night. So. Okay. Well, hey, you, you're here today. Let's do a quick math problem. I understand. I think I've got someone else waiting on the line to catch us off. So uh, you want to give me something real quick here? Got something lined up? Yeah, 69 times 13 squared. Good. I'm going to have to make another calculator on this, Ryan Coggins. <laughs> And I actually just started this, like, as the show was starting. <laughs> oh, well, we're going to get, I'll tell you what, with 13 squared, we're going to get, and we're going to go there first because exponents are our important baby here. So we're going to pick up the 69 here, and we're going to multiply that, woo, by 13 squared gives me 169, Mr. Coggins. So yes. if, if my friend Gary Petko were here, and we're social distancing, so he can't be on the same set as me. We're trying to keep it pretty separated there, but I hope Gary's watching. He would say, let's estimate on this a little bit. We go with the 70 times a 170. We know it's going to drop off a little bit from that, but we get a little estimation going there. And my first thought is that if I pulled this out, I, I could get two zeros going. But then I can come along yep. here and say 7 times 7. You can tell me 7 times 7, I bet, right? What have we got? 49. 49. And then we're going to put a 4 over here. And I've got 1 times 7. I, I think you got that one under control. What's 1 yeah, times 7? Yeah, it's 7. Let's add, four, let's add 4 more to that. I'm getting 11. Does that sound good to you? Yes. So that's our ballpark figure. Now, I'm just going to be, <laughs> I'm going to do what an Algebra 1 student or anyone who are doing these problems in, in high school would be doing. They'd go straight to the calculator and let's we'll go ahead and see what we get with 169 times 69. And how close to our ballpark are we? We're very close. We're very close. Obviously, we bumped it up a little bit in both cases. So I came up with 11,661. And just to make sure that we would have gotten the same thing, let's see what happens if we say 170 times 70. One more time on the calculator. How close were we? Again, we're estimating. And yeah, we got that 11,900. So the actual answer here was... 11,661. But again, this gives us ballpark. It gives us ballpark figure there. So, Ryan, thank you. Can you give them a real quick blurb of where, where you call, how you call, and talk to us, okay? Real quick? Yeah, if you're going to call my line, it's 844-686-2378. And don't forget, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, for Facebook, it's www.facebook.com slash MathLine online. And for YouTube, it's www.youtube.com slash MathLine. A little bit of a difference there, but you should be able to find MathLine okay. You're good. Thank you, sir. It's good to hear from you. And you have a good rest of the evening, all right? Yeah, good to hear from you all, too. Have a good all night. All right. Sure thing. 
And to my next caller, welcome to MathLine. Who am I talking with this afternoon? Hello? I'm Cooper. Yeah. Yes. Hi, my Cooper. Name is Cooper. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Where are you calling from, Cooper? Do you know what city or what county you're living in? Um, uh, Knoxville. Knoxville. So you do know you're close by here. You're close by where I am because I we do this thing in Knox County. The show comes to us from Knox County. So what can I do for you this afternoon? What kind of math problem have you got for me? Um, 16 times 10. And what's that first number again? 16. What's your first number? 16. 16. And times 10? Is that what yeah. we got? Am I good? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, Cooper, what we want to, what I'm going to do here, first of all, I, you're, what, how old are you, by the way? What grade are you in? Kindergarten. Kindergarten. All right. So I'm going to try to figure out some way to make this pretty reasonable for you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so what I want us to think about here, if you took 16 times 1, okay, and I could, I could have a bunch of 16s here, but by the time we added them all up, it would be just as, take just as long a time, I think. What would happen if you were to take 16 times 1? In other words, you say something times 1, you just simply write it down again, right? So you got 16? Yes. And what we're going to look at is that we've got a 0 place here. So we're going to say we have 16 tens, all right? I'm going to look at it at this standpoint. Because 16 times 1 is going to give us 16. But that means I've still got a 10 to deal with here, right? Still dealing with that. So if I were to pick up a bunch of 10s, that basically means I'm going to add a zero to this number. And I'm going to end up with 160. So in other words, I could add 10 plus 10 plus 10. Have you ever counted by 10s to 100? Like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60? Have you ever done that? Okay, wait. I have to go count. Yeah, sometimes maybe when yeah. you're playing hide and seek and you had to go, you know, you had to go search for someone. They wanted you to count by 10s or count yeah. by 5s. I remember growing up, we did that a lot. So you can keep working on this all the way yeah. up, all the way up to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I've done it 10 times. I'm counting on my fingers, all right, for you, buddy? There you go. Got them 10 times. Okay. I need six more of those. So here we go. 110, 20, 30, 40, 30, 50, 40, 50 40, and 60. 60. 60. And that's where we get that 160. Does that make sense to you, buddy? that easy yeah. to do? And if I want to do by fives, mm -hmm. if you gave me like yeah. 16 times five, I could go 5, 10, 15, 20. I could count up on my fingers, count up on my hands, or count on how many times I could write it and keep it rolling in my head. So good question there. Thank you for calling us this afternoon. In kindergarten, I, I'm, I'm excited to hear from folks that young. I appreciate it. And thank you, mom or whoever's there helping you out a little bit. Thank you for helping us out with that too. And you all have a Thank great you. afternoon and evening, okay? Knox County, okay. appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, Cooper. You. All right. And we have an email question that has come our way. And we've, we've been promising some of these emails, so we're going to hit that real quickly here. So let's see we've got this. This is from the Barnes family in Cock County, Tennessee. I'm not sure which Barnes has sent it in, but one of the family members has, and we've been in contact some over this, and they agreed with our answer that we came up with because they said, basically, that's what we were supposed to come up with. We just weren't sure how. So anyway, let's look at it. It's got Rosh builds a side table in the shape of a cube. Each edge of the cube measures 20 inches. So we're talking about 20 by 20 surfaces on all four sides and top and bottom. According to this, he's going to cover the top and the four sides of the table with ceramic tiles. Each tile has an edge length of five. So these are five by five inches also. All right, every one of these that we're going to use. How many tiles will he need? So let's see what we are going to get out of this. What's going to happen here? Um, starting with fact is how much area is this going to cover? This is an area problem, really is. So the area, first of all, we've got 20 inches by 20 inches. It's a cube. That's what all our sides are. And I'm looking at 400 square inches per side. Now, how do I deal with this? I've got a 5 by 5 that has also an area going for it here. So 
So I'm going to take my 5 inches times 5 inches, and that's going to get me 25 square inches. These are all in square inches because they're area. Now, in my thinking here, this is per tile. This, folks, is per side. So a couple ways we could go. Some of you are thinking, okay, Ernie, are you going to multiply 400 times 5 and see what you get and then divide 25 into it? That's one option. I'm going to go for an option that may not require as much to work with, but I'm going to say let's take that 25 and divide it into 400 and see what we're going to need per face or per side of this because we're going to basically work for five of them in the end. So whatever we get here, we're going to multiply that number by five. So I'm going to take the 25 in there, and I'm thinking money because, man, that's quarters, and that's $4, and that gives me 16 quarters. So I'm thinking we've got 16 tiles to use on this top or side or wherever. So we're going to take that 16 tiles and we're going to basically say, hey, we got five sides to go with. So we're going to multiply by five sides. And by the way, this is tiles per side. I figure I can make a little bit of that uh, dimensional analysis business going for us here. And we can see the word sides go away, but look what we got. We got tiles left over and that's going to give me 80 tiles. And that, my friends, will finish up that project that Raj is doing there. And that's good. It's a great math application. The Barnes family, thank you all for sending that in to us. We appreciate you. And it's great to have these emails. Folks, let's go before we get to uh, Mickey, I think, is waiting on the line. Before we get there, let's just remind them how we can do that, Chris, if we can. Uh, t at the uh, math line at tnlearn.org. That's our email address there if you want to catch that up. There we go mathline at tnlearn.org and make a note of that because we will try to respond to you as soon as we can within 24 hours usually and we also will put some of these questions here live on the air with us also when we have our time and we have a little bit of downtime and that was what we had a little bit today but now we got Mickey with us. Mickey welcome back to Mathline this afternoon. How are you doing sir? Doing fine Ernie. Thank you. How are you? That is great. We're glad to have you and again Mickey is one of our Folks who's a retired official with the State Department of Health, there he is. He's our special guest. I appreciate you coming in. And we do it virtually. Uh, saves him from driving in. Also, it's a lot safer that way because we're not we're kind of close quarters here on the set when we have two people on it. So it's good that we keep these separated. We're social distancing also. But um, he's retired, but he's still a grand epidemiologist, and he's been great to give us some insight as to what these numbers that we keep hearing about in the COVID-19 virus business mean. So Mickey, once again, welcome to the show today. And I'm going to throw us right into this rate of increase, which we have been looking at. And I've had other people say, well, can we get some other rates going on? We're going to try to get a few more in today, all right? But let's look at this one. So Mickey, this is what I think you informed me, and let's make sure I'm correct on this. Yesterday, we had uh, 7,394 positive cases. That's total positive cases since COVID-19 has been going through the state. And Correct. we increased to 7,842 today. That's where we are, correct? Yes. So this was a bigger jump than what we've seen the last couple of days. I mean, I can tell that. So we want to figure out what was that actual increase, and then we'll look at what kind of rate that spells for us. And again, we subtract. And let me hit the calculator real quick. I think you told me it was about 400-something. What was it you got? That's right. It's 448. All right. right, let's. I'm going to make sure that I'm hanging out with that amount. So let's do a little subtraction here. Seven, three. It was 94 yesterday. Yeah, 448. I, I trust you. But sometimes I, I like to I like to still make sure that we've got it there and also show our viewers that, hey, it's not all that difficult to figure out these things. Now, we're going to base it on where we were yesterday, which is 7,394. And I keep telling our viewers this, and I know some of them say, boy, we're tired of hearing that, Ernie. But very simply, you always base it on where you started from. And you started from there before you haven't gotten there. You had no way to predict where you were going to end up. So we want to go back to there. And let me do a quick division. You tell me what you got over there for yours. About 6%. About 6%. 
I think that sounded about right. Let me do that. And now we are going to divide by 7,394. And yeah, it's, it's really right about 6.1%. 6, 6 we'll say 6% to the nearest percent on that. So as we go back and look at this thing, we look at this thing as usually being like N over 100. And we cross multiply, we got that 730, wow, 7,394 N equaling a lot of stuff over here. Add two zeros to that, as we were talking about earlier with, um, with Ryan's situation, also with Cooper. There we have it. And our N, we came out was approximately 6.0, looks like about 0.05% there. So that's a, that's a fairly good increase, but we are still in a linear pattern, aren't we? Yes, I'm glad we're still below double digits. That that is important. As, as still, and we're and we're on the we're about middle of that spectrum, really. When you're looking at the single digits, I mean, we're at six. It would be nicer to be under five, but which we've been for three or four days. But these numbers are going to have some variation. What are some of your thoughts that raise this? What are some things that could have happened that have raised this number a little bit? Yeah, those labs could be coming in faster, but probably the most important thing is now you do not have to have symptoms. You do not have to be sick to go okay. get tested. So that means obviously it gives some people incentive because I, I guess curiosity for nothing else. And, That's and, right. And worry, just worry. Am I sick or do I have it or am I carrying it? And then I'm going to be I'm gonna be bad for other people who get in contact with me. So that would make sense. So um, what is, let's see, let's check a look at how the overall cases have gone here. Let me take a look at my graph first of all. If we can go to back to my calculator, there we go. It, it, a lot of people say, well, it doesn't look like there's much change, but I do want to point out that our line was predicting pretty well. Well, it wasn't until it went and moved away. Right there we go. But notice we're a little bit off there. Well, it, it under predicted today. In other words, our caseload was a little bit higher than what we would have predicted by the magenta, the purple line here. By the way, folks, that's why we do these lines of best fit. We kind of like to have an idea of where things are going to go for the next day or the next time period. We're not trying to predict 1,000 days out because that's, that's extrapolation, we call it in the statistics world. And we try to keep it close to the range. So our data keeps getting us close. So one day in advance, it's kind of like when they predict the weather, they're usually very, very good about it three to four days out. But after you get beyond that, you're extrapolating some because things change. Things happen. The, the race don't always stay the same. So, Mickey, yesterday we kind of underpredicted, and I, I'm sorry, you, yesterday we overpredicted a little bit, I think, what we were expecting, and today we are underpredicting somewhat. But we are still lining up. Those points are still lining up. My correlation today was 0.995. The best you can possibly have a bunch of data points is a 1.0. So we're still, still very, very linear. And our, my um, little exponential here, notice it's staying a little bit behind, would you say? We were yes. predicting we were predicted to be much further along today if we kept that exponential going. Instead, we are trekking out this way with the information that we're having. So again, we are still I, I like to feel like we're nine days behind where we were expecting to be, which is to me very good. It means we've we've slowed the rate down quite a bit, but we've got to keep it up. So again, how do we keep that thing going with where we are at this point? What do we need to do? Yeah, so um Attorney, uh, you've heard this a lot and others have too, but it's important to still social distance and uh, to be aware that this virus lives on surfaces. Right. So clean and wipe down surfaces. And uh, if you do go out in public, um, wear a mask. The CDC recommends that now. Okay. Hey, one quick thing, but you mentioned social distancing. Can we look at that death, uh, our deaths of ten in Tennessee? Not want to sound too morbid. There it is. Uh, can you see that from where you are now? Yes. We so got. basically, it's telling us if we did not social distance, if we didn't do anything, uh, we would be in double digits, probably at 19 percent growth. And uh, we have basically saved 1,500 lives uh, because we have wow. been social distancing. And I think I understand that this was this was done a couple of days earlier, but we are at 166 now, but still way below what was projected at that 1,728 mark. Correct. That's right. Uh, and folks, if you'll notice that the exponential is red, but what we've done, we've flattened that quite a bit with the blue, and the blue is actually what happened. So we need to keep that going because 
lives what matter. We want to keep our life. We want to save people's lives, and I think that's a pretty amazing thing right there. Fifteen hundred plus lives saved based on social distancing. All right, Mickey. Hey, thanks for being with us this afternoon, and we always appreciate it when we hear from you. And we'll keep going through this, and we'll have you back hopefully tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. And folks, thank you for tuning in. Cooper, thanks for calling. Ryan, thank you for calling. Uh, the Barnes family for your email. Thank you. And folks, everybody else, get those emails in. All right, mathline at tnlearn.org. We want to hear from you. And also, of course, hey, we're going to be live again tomorrow, so you want to make sure you get a chance to give us a call and find out what's going on in our world. Hey, once again, thanks for tuning in today. And my friends, we will see you once again next time. <music>